Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over this Saturday's UFC card from a DFS perspective. Uh, I have the fight odds screen up here, and we're going to go back and forth between this and the DraftKings, uh, the DraftKings lobby. This week it is a, uh, a full 13 fight card. Uh, they added one fight uh, to bring it to 13, and I mean, I guess we could lose a fight, but right now we're looking at a full 13 card fight uh, slate, which means that. I mean, it, you rate to just have high scores in general. Um, just there's just that many opportunities for for big points to be to be scored. Uh, in addition to that, as you'll see, there are many fighters with very strong inside the distance lines. In other words, there are a lot of fighters that do rate to finish. Um, so uh, it, it becomes very very challenging. One thing that is also challenging about this slate is there's a lot of of stuff going on in the analysis this week. In other words, there's a lot of stuff to talk about with the actual fights and the actual fighters. There's narratives, there's style clashes and things like that. And what we have to do is just kind of put that aside. Um, because remember, this is a DFS breakdown. This is not a betting breakdown. We're not trying to figure out who is good value here. Okay, In DFS, we have to presume that the lines are you know semi-efficient and figure out what good plays are um, given those lines. Now, the style thing is important when it comes to finding good wrestlers, because as you know, um, you know in the absence of a good uh, inside the distance line, you do want fighters that have a lot of uh, grappling upside. But aside from that, you can really go crazy with a lot of the analysis on these fights. So on, on cards like this, I find it best to just really just be simple and just go back to basics with every fight and talk about, about what you need. In other words, let's talk about if there's a finish out there, if there's wrestling out there, and not get too hung up on everything else. Like, for example, this Juliana Miller, Luana Santos fight, I mean, this fight has been just, just analyzed to the death. I mean, like every which way from Sunday. And you can go nuts with this fight. Juliana Miller came in as a minus like 400 favorite last week and and basic, and shit the bed, so to speak. You know, she got dominated. And now she's going to be a plus 140 underdog against a, another newcomer. And people are going just crazy trying to figure this out. Like, is Juliana Miller good value because of, you know, is, is the, the, the line movement uh, due to recency bias too wide? And is Luana Santos, does she have that? grappling upside to to you know to to deal with Juliana Miller's aggression and things like that. Just forget about all that. Right. For DFS, it's not that important. Okay. Let's just take a look at the odds. So first of all, you have Julia, we have Luana Santos, she's minus 138. According to Vig, uh, with Vig included, it's maybe about one 128. So let's first see if there's any line value. Um the DraftKings price looks about right. Santos 8,300, Miller 7,900, which is what it should be, all else being equal with this type of, of, of money line. So no value there. Um, so let's take a look at the, at the inside the distance lines. Um, for these prices, you need for, uh, for a fight to be viable, probably an inside the distance line for about plus 200 or so for each fighter, maybe plus 250 at the most. Let's take a look at this. You have Miller inside the distance is plus 350, so that's terrible. Santos inside the distance of plus like 400, that's even worse. So on the inside the distance line analysis, this fight is just a complete fade. Okay? The only thing that's, that's, that might be appealing here is the fact that Santos is a grappler. And... Uh, she has a lot of judo throws and those types of things can rack up some fantasy points. Um, so the question is, does that upside overwhelm the, the atrocious inside the distance line? Um, I think the answer is that on a 13 fight card, it's not that big a deal. In other words, if this were a 10 fight card, um, I would say, okay, Forget about the inside of the distance line. Let's just, you know, if the person's upside is based on wrestling, I don't care if there's no no finishing upside. Let's just go with it. Um, but for 13 fights, you're just going to need a lot more points. So I think this fight might actually, I don't want to say be over-owned, but I think this fight's been analyzed a little bit 
too aggressively. So I'm probably going to be underweight on this. And I thought about this one a lot. I started off this week figuring this was going to be a, 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 a fight to target. But again, I just got drawn into the, the, the X's and O's of this and forgot about just the straight numbers. And the straight numbers indicate that this fight has very little fantasy upside, with the exception of maybe if Santos gets just a whole bunch of takedowns. Um, and it's certainly possible, um, but uh, you usually at least want to have some kind of inside the distance line to go along with it. So I'm probably a, I'm going to be under on this fight in general. If there's anybody on the side I will take is probably Santos. Probably won't have much of Miller at all. Although I should say that Miller is, Miller's inside the distance line is a little better, but it's just not it's just not viable at plus three twenty at that price. Okay, um, moving up, we have Demond Blackshear versus Jose Johnson. This was added to the card recently, and these types of fights usually, I don't say usually, but they tend to provide some line value. And as you see, you have Demond Blackshear is now a minus two hundred favorite, and even with Vegas, I mean minus one eighty, and he's only eighty six hundred. Um, that's not bad. Okay, that that's not bad. The only reason it's not incredible line value is that there's probably better, you know, there's better options above him. You know, you have like, well, we'll get to, we'll get to them later, but there's $8,900 fighters that are, that are maybe minus 250 or something like that. But Blackshear at 8,600 is pretty good. It just for straight line value. And also he does have wrestling upside. And not only does he have wrestling upside, but it's kind of a double-edged sword because Johnson, he has poor takedown defense. So when you have, both parts of the fight that are, you know, that, that are conducive to a lot of takedowns. That's really something to, to respect. So uh, Blackshear, even in the absence of an inside the distance line uh, worth mentioning is probably a good play, um, but it may as well just take a look here. We don't even have an inside the distance line. You do have a under 2.5 rounds of minus, you know, 130 or something like that. So it's not going to be great, but I definitely think that Blackshear is, is in play here, given the line value. And given the um, the takedown upside, um, not even takedown upside, I think that's really his path to win is for him to get takedowns because Jose Johnson can't, you know, can't defend them. Um, as far as Jose Johnson goes, um, if, if I knew that Demond Blackshear was going to be extremely popular, I would say that Jose Johnson rates to be at least some leverage. But again, in the absence of a great inside the distance line, I think it's just kind of pedestrian here. So. For me, uh, uh, it's Blackshear and very little Johnson. Do I like Blackshear more than Santos? Yes. So right now, in order, I have Blackshear, then Santos, then probably very little on Miller and Johnson. Okay, moving on, we have Jacqueline Amarim versus Montserrat Ruiz. Um, again, let's not get into the X's and O's of this. You can do this forever. But you, you have a minus 240 favorite. All right, she's minus 220, actually, with the big. And let's first look, see if there's any line value. No, 9,100 is pretty much where she should be, so that makes sense. So at 9,100, okay, what do you need at 9,100? At 9,100, you need an inside the distance line of about minus 110 or, um, or a grappling upside or a significant grappling upside. And when you look at this, you see – that she has both. So first of all, you have Amarin inside the distance is minus 140. That's extremely strong. Plus, she has some control time upside. Um, I don't know if she has straight up takedown upside, although she does, but I think Montserrat Ruiz is just as good as far as the ability to get some throws and get it down on the ground. But um, uh the fact that she has this strong inside the distance line plus some grappling upside, I think it makes her an extremely strong play. So um, Ruiz, uh, Amrim, definitely. Ruiz, the, the problem with Ruiz is that she just doesn't win too often. I mean, she's plus, how often is she going to win? She's going to win like 30% of the time. And when she wins, is she always going to be optimal? Um, I mean, I don't know. I mean, she's, she has a, she has basically no inside the distance line, right? If I'm not mistaken. 
uh, let's see, Ruiz inside this, like plus a thousand. I mean, if anything, maybe she gets again a couple of judo throw takedowns and some control time, but but it's not as if I don't know. I I would I would sprinkle her in 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 MME. I would give a little bit of exposure to Ruiz in MME, but certainly wouldn't be a priority underdog in 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 twenty back. So uh, Amarim definitely a good play. Um, and I'm not really getting to the underdog that much. All right. Uh, Martin Boudet against Josh Parisian heavyweight fight. You have Boudet minus 200. Um, similar to Blackshear, I guess. However, look at the pricing. He's more expensive than Blackshear. Um, so right there, Boudet is an inferior play to Blackshear. In addition to that, when you look at the inside the distance line, let's take a look at it. You don't usually get this as far as heavyweights, but but the inside the distance line is really poor. I mean, he is plus 180. But I wonder if he has some takedown upside to go along with it. I mean, I think he does. And again, this is where you do have to factor in your knowledge of the styles of these fighters. Um, Boudet is not really a pure wrestler, but he does put a lot of pressure on him against uh, on his opponents against the cage. And if he can get the takedowns against the cage, that could be enough. So I think that Budai is almost equal to, to, to Blackshear, but maybe a little bit worse. That would be my take there. Region on the other side, a hopeless inside the distance line, very little takedown upside, just an atrocious play. All right, so you have Francis Marshall versus Isaac Dolgarian. So this is a, a very important fight to deal with because you have Dolgarian, who is a who is a pure wrestler, who has won all eight of his fights inside the first round. So he has absolutely everything that you want in a DFS fighter. Um, the, the the issue with him in the analysis is that. He hasn't really fought anybody, so we don't know how good he is, really. But we can't worry about that. You know, we have to presume that these odds are somewhat efficient. And he's plus 160 to win. And he's plus 160 to win. He's got an inside the distance line of, of like, plus 220, which isn't that great. But but it's all wrestling with this guy. I mean, his 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 win condition is just a, a, a DFS gold mine. So, so – he is going to rate to be, I would say, clearly the best uh, underdog on the slate. Now, the thing is, though, is that because of that, he's probably going to be the most popular underdog on the slate. And when that happens, you really need to consider the other side of this. Um, so when you look at the Francis Marshall side, first, let's look at the, let's look at the prices first. Um, 85.77. Well, there's a little bit of line value maybe in Bul in Bul in Dolgarian, right? Because remember, let's compare the Blackshear. Blackshear was minus 220, and he's only 100 more than Marshall, 200 more. So, that's another reason why Dolgarian's a good play. But, but, we we're trying to figure out if Marshall is good leverage here. So he's got to be at least a decent play. We know that Dolgarian is a great play, but if Marshall's a decent play, that's good enough because you're going to get leverage against a very popular underdog here. Um, Marshall inside the distance plus 170. That's not bad. That is not terrible. I mean, it's it's not you know it's not great. I mean, 8500, but it's really not bad. So I, I think that he is really in play here. And um, the fact is that Dolgarian is going to push the pace and there's going to be a lot going on here. So I think that Marshall could get this finished. So I think that Marshall is, is very, very live here, which I guess makes this the first real key fight to target uh, on the, on the slate, uh, which is sort of interesting considering neither of them are that great of an inside the distance line, but because of the dynamic of this, you know, Dolgarian with all the wrestling upside of his, all his first round finishes and Marshall getting all the leverage against it. I think this is a, 
this is the first fight that you really want to make sure you key on. Right, moving on, you have Terrence McKinney versus Mike Breeden. Um, he's Terrence McKinney's minus basically 300. Um, let's take a look at the at the line here. I mean, the, the price. I mean, he's only 9,200. That's pretty, pretty reasonable. And at 9,200, you need an inside the distance line of about, like I said, about minus 110 or so, or grappling upside. And his inside the distance line is minus 200. I mean, that's just ridiculous. Not to mention that he has wrestling upside. So he is just an absolute elite play here. So it's, it's, we're talking about the elite plays. So far, we have McKinney and, um, and Amber. But let's put in, you know, the, the, the good underdog there, Dolgarian, just to start off with. Okay. But McKinney and, and Amram are extremely strong plays. Um, let's look at the Breed inside. Um, let's look at his inside the distance prop line. Breed inside the distance is, is plus 350. That's just really, really poor. I mean, you really want to get like plus 300. And the other thing about it is that, is that he doesn't have a lot of first round upside. Uh, all the first round upside is going to be in, in McKinney. Breeden's upside for his knockouts or his finishes are going to be in the second round, which which matters. You know, you get a second round not, uh, finish, you might only get 85 points. So um, uh, I'm not too into Breeden as an underdog, but 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 McKinney is obviously very, very strong. Now let's go on to another one. We have Marcus McGee. He's minus 400. You know, uh, and what could you get? What what price can you put on a guy who's minus four hundred? You get him the you know a, an elite price tag, which is ninety six hundred. Um, so there's no real line value either way. And for ninety six hundred, I mean, what do you need? You need an inside the distance line of not only like minus one fifty, but you really need like first rounds of minus one fifty, sort of. So because that's the only way you really get there is in the first round. Let's take a look at what these numbers are. Marcus Mingy inside the distance minus 200. That's fine. But let's see round one. And that's pretty good. McGee round one plus 150. I mean, you really need more than that, though. I mean, I think you need like minus 110 for him to be a good, a good, uh, good play at this price. And I cert I, I regard McKinney and Amarin to be better um, than, than McGee. Um, am I going to say he's a bad play? No, I mean, because he's, you know, 40% of the time, he knocks the guy out in the first round. Um, but even if he gets a first-round KO, depending on how it works, that not, might not even be enough at 9,600. So I think of all of the the the, the, the high-priced guys, I actually put McGee as, as the weakest relative to, you know, actually, we'll get to another one later. Um, I certainly have McGee below McKinney and Amaran. And JP buys, he just doesn't win on win enough. You know, he's, he's he wins like 25% of the time. It's not good enough. If I knew that McGee was going to be extremely popular, I would say, okay, maybe you get some leverage here, but I don't really know which of these favorites are going to be the, the chalky ones. I mean, I think they all look like good plays. And I think ownership is going to be spread out around among these guys. We'll get to another one later, but but so if I knew that McK that McGee was going to be clearly the big chalk. Um, I would say maybe buys with his wrestling upside, maybe you get some leverage, but I just don't see it. It just doesn't win often enough here. Okay, moving on, we have another big favorite. We have Josh Fremd, like minus 350 or something like that. Yeah. Uh, against Jamie Pickett, it's not 9,400. So look, good price. I mean, fair price given his win odds. But again, for his price, he's going to need. A, a a a very strong inside the distance prop of over 110 minus 110 at probably and grappling upside um so let's take a look at it friends inside the distance i imagine yeah minus 140 it's like really really strong and he does he have wrestling upside i mean a little so i consider him a, a good play you know and that's what you're getting here you know, all these 9K and ups are good plays. They just are. And you just have to have to think about what, what you want to do. Uh, I, I honestly think that you should just really just take the cheapest of them. Because, I mean, who's to say? I mean, all these guys have the same ceiling. They really do. They all have first round 
KO plus, you know, plus sundries. Maybe one or maybe some of them are a little more likely than the others to reach the ceiling. But given how, you know, the underdogs are kind of weak and you really probably do need the same salary. I mean, I would probably just go with the cheapest of them. So like Fred is probably goes below uh, McKinney and Amram just because of price, just because you can get to some of these other underdogs, which we'll get to. And Pickett, again, he just doesn't win often enough. And he uh, <laughs> he doesn't score well. He doesn't score well. Uh, I wonder what his inside the distance line is. It's plus 1,000, let's see. Plus like 700. I mean, and no wrestling. Just He's a terrible DraftKings uh, scorer. All right. Um, Tafan and Shuki versus AJ Dobson. You have and Shuki is uh, minus 140. Minus 130-ish with the VIG. So we're expecting you know, about 8,300, 8,400. And that's what you're getting. So no line value there. Um, let's take a look and see what the inside the distance lines here. You have um, and Shukri inside the distance, plus 180, not the worst. Dobson, plus 230, not great. But there is a chance that Dobson has wrestling upside. Uh, I mean, he does have wrestling upside, but I'm just not sure he's going to go for it. I mean, it's not like Dolgarian, who's 100% going to go for takedowns. Um, it's not 100% that Dobson goes for takedowns. That's just that's just the way it is. Um, I would rather, as far as the favorite goes, I would much rather play someone like Blackshear than in Chukwe, um with his wrestling upside. I would much rather play Marshall than in Chukwe with both his wrestling upside and his inside the distance line and his leverage. Um, I think the Dobson play could end up being a little chalky um, and, and probably in a weird way for good reason, because you're just going to have to find some reasonable underdogs here. And just because he wins the fight, you know, 45% of the time, plus some degree of wrestling upside, I think that makes him probably good enough. You know, I, I'm not expecting all that much, but again, in the absence of great underdogs, I think we have to just go with what we can get, you know? And and so I think that Dobson looks somewhat decent. So let's put him in for now as a reasonable underdog here. So we have two reasonable underdogs so far, Dobson and Bulgarian. We have two of the big favorites so far. All right, moving on, we have Yasmin Lucindo versus Pagliana Vienna. Uh, Lucindo is minus 190, so we're expecting to get about Oh, 8,700, maybe something like that. Let's take a look at the price. Yep, 8,700, 7,500. So let's take a look at the uh, at the inside the distance line here. Uh, Lucindo, she has no wrestling upsides. So you don't have to worry about that. And she's like plus 400 inside the distance, or she's a complete fade as far as I'm concerned. Now, Viana is interesting because her inside the distance line is plus 300. And at that price, that's really not bad. Okay, so I think that Viana falls into that kind of hold your nose underdog you have to keep in your pool. So I remember there are very, very, there are very few decent underdogs this week. So I think I would add Viana to Dobson and Bulgar and Dolgarian as the list of viable underdogs. Just because of her inside the distance line. Um, okay, now we have Khalil Roundtree against Chris Dawkins. I thought this line would steam up a little more. That's for another discussion. But Dawkins is held. I mean, he's, he's held his, his line here. Um, so there's no line value. You have, you have Roundtree at minus 180, which is probably makes him about 8,800 or so, something like that on a card like this. As a matter of fact, I mean, he's 8,900. You could, you could argue that, that, Dawkins has a little bit of uber sneaky line value here. Um, now, let's take a look at the inside the distance lines, though. You have Dawkins. Let's start with Roundtree. Roundtree inside the distance is minus one sixty. I mean, at 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 eighty nine hundred. I mean. <laughs> I mean, that is a, an extremely strong play. 
All right. So this is an extremely strong play. You know, McKinney, Amaranth, you know, uh, Roundtree. Okay. Um, that's like elite, actually. I, I almost want to say this is the best of them all. Roundtree, Amarin, McKinney, they're all great. I mean, really. Um, now, I, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if Dawkus, though, is a good play as well. So Dawkus, again, is a little bit of line value, as I mentioned. And at 7,300, he doesn't need that much of a, an inside-the-distance prop to be viable here. He's inside the distance, about the same as Viana, right? So he is plus, actually, it's worse. So he's plus 350 or so. So it's worse than Viana's. I've heard that there's a possibility the S wrestling upside. I just haven't seen it yet. The, the only thing I would say, though, is because Roundtree is doing a rate so well, that I think Dawkins is going to provide some good leverage. Um, I think that Roundtree is probably going to be pretty highly owned. So Let's put it another way. I think of of all of the the opponents of these fighters, you know, of these high priced fighters. Like if you look at McKinney, Amarim, uh, Roundtree, who else did we say before? Uh, McGee, uh, Friend. I think that Dawkins is the most live of all of the opponents. So, uh, given the fact that people are going to go to these guys, I do think Dawkins should be included in the uh, in the in the underdog pool. So. We're getting there. I mean, we have Viana, Dawkins, Dolgarian, some Dobson. So I think all four of those look pretty good. Um, all right. Cub Swanson versus Hadim Dawadu. Hakeem Dawadu. He is a uh, Dawadu is a plus 230 or so um, with Vig about plus 200. I mean, minus 200. So I'm expecting him to be about 9K, something like that. And uh, that's what he is, 9K. And remember, at 9K, you need an inside the distance line of about minus 110 or so to be viable in the absence of, of wrestling upside. And unfortunately for him, he doesn't really have it. That would do inside the distance is, is like plus 160. So it's just not quite as good. I mean, it's not even remotely as good as some of these other players. Now, he's going to be less popular, that's for sure. But, I mean, it's just hard for him to beat – you know, those other guys, honestly. So I'll probably end up fading him. On the other side, you have Swanson, his inside the distance line, plus, like, well, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's that's actually my decision, plus 300. Swanson's inside the distance, plus 700, so that's no good. So this whole fight's probably a pass. And moving on to the main event, we have uh, Luque versus Dos Anjos. It's basically a pick -em. And if we look at the prices, it's basically a pick -em. The thing is, is that um, I promise you that Dos Anjos is a good play, okay? Because his entire win condition is going to be predicated on takedowns. And if you give somebody a five-round fight to get them, that is just racks up the fantasy point. So he is definitely the better of these plays, and he's certainly extremely viable and he's probably gonna be extremely chalk but let's take a look and see luke uh if he's worth uh taking a shot as well i imagine he is if for no other reason because dos Anjos is gonna be popular uh luke inside the distance plus 170 that's not bad for openers plus the volume that he could get in a five round fight if he doesn't get taken down a bunch of times because remember you know we're talking about win conditions here and if Luke gets taken down a bunch of times, he's just not winning. So I'm not worried about his score. But if he wins, it's because he didn't get taken down and probably pops up a lot of volume and maybe even gets a finish. So uh, I think that Luke is also in play here. Um, Dos Anjos, I, I imagine, has to be the most popular um, just because of all of his take down upside and probably for good reason. So what looked to be a, kind of an impossible 13-fight card, I think became pretty easy. Honestly, I think the main event, let's let's go back to the draft teams. I think the main event you want to play, let's go from the top down. I think the main event you want to play both sides. I think you want to fade the Dawadu fight. I think you want to play both sides of the round tree fight. I think you want to fade Lucinda and play some Vienna. I think you want to fade in Chukui and play some Dobson. I think that you can play Friend, but he's probably weaker at some of the cheaper ones. I think that um, 
Pickett's a fade. I think McGee, again, is probably the, the weakest of them just because of his price of these big, big favorites. Buys, no good. McKinney, elite play. Don't play Breeden. Marshall Dogarian, play both sides. Boudet, um, uh, you know, very low owned. So maybe take a shot with him. Uh, Parisian, nothing. Uh, Amarim, elite play. Don't play the other side. Blackshear, good play. Not, I don't think I want to play the other side. Uh, Santos Miller, probably a fade. If anything, just play a little bit of Santos. And that's pretty much it. Uh, that'll do it. Uh, good luck, everybody, and stay tuned. Uh, we will have the betting breakdown probably tomorrow. Good luck.